Welcome back to the Pulp Mix Fantasy Show presented by Maxxis Tire. I'm Donnie from Roto Mode. In this video, I'll give you five riders to keep an eye on when making picks in Salt Lake City, FFL stats, race day weather, and schedule. It was an early look at my team, all courtesy of Maxxis Tire. You know Maxxis Tire. You know their MXST tire designed by the king of Supercross and my all-time favorite rider, Jeremy McGrath. It is the newest and most advanced tire on the Maxxis MX lineup featuring an all-new tread pattern, compound, and composition to provide the stability, predictability, and traction that the upper tiers of motocross demand available at your local retailer and also at motosport.com the biggest news coming into the weekend is of course eli tomac sitting out the finale for the third consecutive year after a thumb injury suffered in denver in addition to injuries the east west showdown will likely see a few guys in the 250 class sit out that could have been sneaky good picks so be sure to check the little box above the list after qualifying to filter out all of those riders who did not set a time in practice when picking your 250 all-star take care this weekend as there is not a lot of value of the eight all-stars five of them have a handicap of two or less but only three can land on the podium so let's skip all of them and go for value with jordan smith the veteran comes in with four needing a top five and that is precisely what he did at the last showdown back in nashville smith is probably just a tick off those top five but his starts are solid and if he manages to get a whole shot he could absolutely win this thing on any given night a double eligible guy I'm locking in this weekend is Julian Bomer, a five handicap. Remember that the Red Bull K-Team rider finished ninth at the showdown in Nashville and is one of the best starters in the field. Despite that, he is also good at working through the field. That ninth in Nashville wasn't because of a start. He was actually 14th on the first lap and worked his way into a top 10 against the double field. 450 All-Star, we are down to just six, and with three rookies and an injury in the mix, I'm after defending champion Chase Exton. A DNF at Nashville really sunk his run at second overall, but he has been lights out consistent otherwise, with every other finish inside the top 10 with 11 top fives. Now that Eli is gone, a top five should be a guarantee for his final run with the number one this season. The rider I'm wary of this weekend is Dean Wilson. It's not that Dino is a bad pick in his last professional full-time race. I just worry about his upside. He has finished 11-11-11 in the last three weekends, plummeting his handicap from an 8 to just 3. Even if he matches his season best of 11th, that still only gets you 28 points. He would need to finish 8th or better to be really considered a great pick, and although that's not out of the question, I just think there are better options out there. Lots of high handicap value in the 450 class, but that feels like a cop out at the end of the year. If you are down in your league and need a bit of a 250 Hail Mary, gotta be looking at Casey Cochran. The rookie is streaky, and his best finish of 15th probably scares you off here as his East finishes have been 15, 16, 15, but he also finished 15th in Nashville after a fourth in his heat put him easily through. He has clearly the best bike of the high handicappers, and Casey has always been a fantastic starter. I'm not putting him on my early team, but depending on who shows up and how qualifying goes, he is my first alternate. 250 FFL stats scream kitchen and he does have the poise to rip a holy in a high presser situation like this but I am definitely abstaining with so many good starters on the gate this weekend. 450 side with Tomac and Roxon down and Sex and Ailing that really opens it up for Jet although there's a good chance he's just going out there with the goal of staying on two wheels and may not push too deep into that first corner. A mild night in Utah with highs in the upper 60s and clear skies most of the day. Reminder this race is an hour later than usual feeling like the races of yesteryear with race day live kicking off at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Qualifying cheat sheets hit the socials at 7 p.m. Eastern with the picks locking at 8 p.m. and the gates dropping for the final time in an arena for a few months just a few moments later. My Thursday team has Jordan Smith at All-Star, Seth Hamaker with a 2, Julian Bomer with a 5, as well as Ryder DeFrancesco boasting a 7. Chase Sexton locked in for a 450 All-Star, also looking at Colt Nichols at a 5, Kyle Chisholm's 11, as well as Cade Clayson also an 11. Don't forget to follow Pulpamex Fantasy and at RotoX Mode on both Instagram and Twitter for injury updates as the weekend rolls on, qualifying info and stats and banter throughout the race itself, and those fantasy cheat sheets once qualifying is done and wrapped. Thanks as always for watching the Pulpamex Fantasy Show presented by Maxis Tire. My name is Donnie. May your chizzes chiz this weekend. Remember that eight is great. And most importantly, have fun. Good luck, y'all.